Hi, everyone. I'm not sure whether you can hear me. This is the first web webinar that Sam and I have done. Um, I'm hopeful that you can see the screen. And maybe you can see me. I'm waiting for Sam. She's here. <laughs> We're just trying to figure out to bring her in. We're happy that you were able to join us today. It is recording for those people who aren't able to be here. Um, there's a little, I think you should see a little hand where you can click on it to raise your hand. So if you can hear me, can you click on that so that I know that you can hear? And there's also a chat on the sidebar as well. So you can jump into the chat too. All right, I can't hear anyone. So I'm, or Sam is who I wanna hear. <laughs> All right, so we have a Nearpod that we wanna share with you. And I'm gonna go ahead, I think, I'm gonna make sure Sam is good with this. <laughs> see if she can do that. Okay. So I can see all the hands are raising. That's exciting. Oh my gosh, there's 62 people. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. This is exciting and scary and uncharted territory, which is what this whole thing is about in the first place. <laughs> okay, let me close the hands. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead. We want you to join this Nearpod. So I'm gonna start a live session. And I'm gonna go with this one, here we go. So you'll want to join using this code. One second while it loads up. The code's going to be up here in the left corner. So you can either use the app or you can join on the Nearpod website. So if you just uh, type in nearpod.com and join session. As soon as this comes up, you'll be able to join using the code. And then we'll walk through this together. Oh no, Sam has an attendee role. So hold on. There she is. Okay, so Sam, you should be switching. Hey, hooray! <laughs> hey, can you hear me all right? Okay, awesome. Oh, good. Awesome, awesome. It's gonna be hooray! Us. Okay. Yay. Yes, I'm here. Hooray. <laughs> All right. So, Chris, were you able to give them okay. the code Let and everything? Let me cancel my... Oh, no. Let me cancel this one since Sam has it. The The thing was that Sam was going to run the Nearpod. So, let me cancel this one. So sorry, guys. <laughs> we're working on this. Let me cancel it. And show my screen. Yes. Okay. Perfect. And then I will let Sam share her screen, which you should be okay. able to see it. So the new code is RYQAV. Hooray, you can see it. Can you hear me okay, Chris? Let me move it, make sure that it's Sam here. Hey yo! Yay! I can't hear you though. It works. Oh, fantastic! Man. All right, I'm taking the ears off. <laughs> test, test, one, two, three. 
I can hear you. Thank goodness. How's that? <laughs> you can? Oh, okay. All right. Can so I'm going to get started okay. here. Right. Which is That's awesome. Here. Does it your, I'm just wondering if it's your screen or my screen that's sharing. Uh, I think it's mine. People can see your screen and click to stop screen sharing. Click to stop screen. I won't stop screen sharing. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me see All if right. I can. Right. Oh gosh. You know, this is, this is good modeling for people to see that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> two, two professors can get this right. We promise, guys. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing my all of my stuff. <laughs> okay. 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 I hope that did it. And Chris, can and you put Chris, your ears back in? Because I'm getting in. my voice coming back through. <laughs> oh shoot. I know. Hold on. No problemo. So we have about 44 people in the group. I can see down here um, on the left-hand side of the screen. I'll keep the code up and we'll get started here. I think we have 72 total in the uh, meeting. So I wanna welcome you guys today. This is um, an impromptu um, webinar that we decided to host to help future teachers during this time of need. I think this is a really great time for us to be able to lead and really come together as a as a future generation of educators are going to rock the world one day, hopefully sooner than later, you know, in, in September. So we have a couple of resources we want to share with you today. We're going to walk through some ways you can plan for success and how you can prepare uh, for success. Um, a lot of these strategies that we're going to share with you today, it is contingent upon your university and your education department and uh, how they want to handle things. We have some guidelines and some, suggest some suggestions you can follow through. We have resources we're gonna share with you. And for um, everyone who registered, we're also gonna send you the link to this Nearpod presentation in student mode. So you can go through after today's talk and you can find the resources again. Well, also be sharing more resources throughout the week. Yes, we have 54 attendees with us today, and we're so glad you guys are taking some time out of your Tuesday. Um, okay, thank you. <laughs> Save time out of your Tuesday to work with us. So like I said before, there are tons of questions that were asked in that Google form if you use that to fill out we have some answers we don't have all the answers there i think there's a lot more questions and answers during this time this is something no one has ever um worked through or presented through so we're going to do our best we have a few um a few answers some few strategies some were some questions very specific to how do i engage learners online how do i engage young ones how do i engage students with special needs and these are all fantastic questions like i said we don't have all the answers but we can work through some of these together all right so let's keep rocking and rolling here um, we're going to talk about some ways to prepare for success so before we even start working in through all of these strategies there are some ways you can start preparing for success now as a student teacher so some ways to set yourself up first if you're a student teacher and um, i know here in pennsylvania our schools are off for 10 days so this is um, a time for you to rest recoup figure out what the uh, your department's plan is or the university's plan is for student teachers and field experiences. Before you even get started on any of these strategies, please find out what those strategies are or what the plan is from your university or from your education department. And it could be that there's no plan yet, but it's coming and that's okay too. So be patient and if that's if you're in that boat. Find out if the school that you're working with for your internship or for your student teaching experience, find out if they plan to go online after this time period or if they're planning to go online during this time period. And if they are, then find out if they're a Google school, a Microsoft school, what LMS they're using. For example, they might use Schoology or Blackboard, Google, Google Classroom or Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Teams, whatever it is, find out what that is. And that's a great first step to get started. 
Once we have an understanding of what your department plan is and the university's plan, in, plan is, find out what the school district's plan is, if they're going to go online, and if they are, here are some strategies that can help you out. I'll always find out what that learning management system is, or it's also called an LMS. This is the way the teachers plans to deliver their content, get the assignments out to students, those types of things. So maybe you've already observed that in your student teaching experience. Maybe you've already were able to get in there and see you know, how the teacher is teaching using their learning management system. Or maybe this is brand new to all of your, um, to, to, to the teacher that you're working with. And that's okay too, because this is where we can really lean into our um, expertise when it comes to educational technology. We can get to learn that learning management system right away and friends there are videos and tutorials for every single learning management system mm -hmm. the Schoology the Google Classroom the uh, Microsoft Teams Blackboard all on their websites there's under resources or support or you know what my best bet is I always go to YouTube and I always type in um, Microsoft Teams uh, and then I type in what I want to learn about and there's always a resource there. Sometimes there are resources made by other teachers which are great. Other times there are resources made by the company. So look to see who's making those resources and find out how to use that learning management system and learn it. Your cooperating teacher um, can add you to their learning management system to their class as long as it's okay with them and their school district. So make sure that they um, they can add you as long as it's okay with their tech director, their school district. There are some steps they need to follow, but you are able to be added as a collaborator, as a, as a teacher, or as a, instead of being a student mode in those learning management systems, you can be added as a co-teacher. You just need to double check I those. Sam. Please go for it. Yeah, and I, first of all, I want to say happy thanks or happy Thanksgiving. Good God, happy Valentine's <laughs> Day. It. I can't. I'm not sick though. But it is St. Patrick's Day. I got my Frostburg State University um, T-shirt on today with my le little lucky shamrocks. But anywho, I just wanted to say to a lot of our students, and I don't know if this happens for yours, they are given permission to be in whatever they're using, Seesaw, whatever the case may be. But here's here's my biggest concern for our interns. It is just so important that you don't communicate with your littles without your teacher knowing. Um, it's a very scary time for everyone and families are unsure about you know how this is all going to come together and they're looking to the teachers and the teachers are nervous and scared as well but for our interns anytime that you want to communicate as we go through our presentation we have ideas i just, we can't say it enough sam to them that you really want to make sure that your mentor teacher is fine with a video that you would put up or a message that you want to send out but it should all go through whatever platform they're using like some of our teachers use padlet as their home communication so it doesn't even have to be like an official lms it could just be something like an app such as padlet so i just don't want our kids popping stuff out there without having it vetted by their mentor teachers first so it's just like we always say to them if you're sending something home it has to be checked off by your mentor it has to be checked off by the principal all of those those rules still apply, if not even more so now, because families are counting on teachers keeping their kids safe online while we are learning. Absolutely, and I couldn't agree more. So double check and triple check before you send yeah. anything out. Absolutely, yes, ask permission, ask permission. Okay, so let's keep rolling here before hopefully Maybe some of you have left campus already. I know some of our students are in that process of leaving campus now. Um, make sure that you have your cooperating teachers or your mentor teachers' contact information. That includes their cell phone and their email address, so you can keep it that you probably have that information already, but you might not have your supervisor's cell phone number or email address, your college supervisors. Make sure you have that as well. Also, your college supervisor might be having virtual office hours with uh, student teachers, so make sure that um, you get a hold of that schedule if they're offering that as well as a support for their practicum students. Make sure that you're keeping those lines of communication open between your cooperating teacher or your mentor teacher and your college supervisor. Check in weekly if you can. Share some thoughts and ideas that you're finding online, resources that you're finding, or any concerns or questions that you might have. These are questions that, um, some of the questions that we were asked, for example, were, will I get certified? How do I get my hours? These are questions we don't have answers to, friends. 
but your supervisors may have those answers as more information comes rolling from the state and from the governments. We might get more information about that in the coming weeks. We really don't know. So those are great questions for your supervisor um, and the department in which you're with to, uh, to work through. But please keep those lines of communication open between your mentor and your college supervisor so everyone's in the loop of what's going on um, with, with, as we, as we wrestle through this, um, this time. So I want you to think through online learning and online learning can really look um, different depending on what content area that you're teaching. It can be, uh, some of it can be, um, I'm sure we've experienced online learning as some was lecture based, some was interactive, some was engaging, some had discussions, some had videos, some had students creating content and really think outside the bun a little bit here, Renz, because we can really make this time of online remote learning in this emergency situation a really engaging and motivating space for our students to learn. So I want you to think outside the bun. Don't think I have to record my presentations and videos and send them out. Try to get creative. And there, oh my gosh, Chris, there are so many resources out there <laughs> floating around. <laughs> we tried You're to catch them all. Oh, it is overwhelming. It truly is. And it can get really wrong. It really is like drinking through a fire hose. We picked out a few we want to share with you today. Yeah. And remember, this is all contingent upon your department's plan and your uh, school district's plan. So please don't start implementing some of these things without permissions. Um, so we, we found tons of resources and we're going to share these out with you all today. Um, after this presentation so you can have access to them and oh my gosh it really was a little overwhelming so you should yeah. be able to click on your slide there's a whole um uh, spreadsheet here that was crowdsourced by educators from around the world this one's called amazing educational resources and here you can find what the company is that they're and what the link is what they're offering teachers um, parents um, educators and what um, a little description there. So if you scroll through, you can find tons of resources there. One I wanna show you very quickly, um, I'm going to continue to screen share and I hope it stays up. So hopefully, <laughs> epic. Epic is really epic. I like to, I like to um, describe epic as Netflix for kids, but with books. And I hope you guys can see my screen here. Sorry, we can. Me, awesome, super great. So what it does, uh, so it looks your schools closed, get free student access from your teacher. So um, if your school district, if the school district that you're working with uh, subscribes to Epic, it looks like uh, parents can get access too. But if you have a, a, um, a school email address, you can get Epic for your class. And what it is, is you can see here, we have tons and tons of books. And I know Chris is really excited because she's a literacy professor. <laughs> and here you can click on yeah. it and you can see all the different books. And these are just a sampling of them for all different age ranges. And you can set up your class and you can have it separated by what students enjoy reading and it meets them on their readability level there's some stuff in um, audiobooks we have some stuff translated in Spanish there's uh, videos as well to support the love of reading and you'll see some uh, fan for fancy Nancy but you can scroll through and these are just a very small sampling of what they have and students can still interact with books and read them and have them read to them and they even have little um, um, quizzes at the end as well which is um, a lot of fun to see how our students did with uh, comprehension so you can go through and you can check out check this out this is uh, a free site they have a 30-day free trial maybe that'll last us um, and you guys can check out up above there where it says about the remote learning so this is a fantastic resource to share with to share with your cooperating teacher um, if they don't have it already and Chris I know you had something you wanted to share yeah. as well would you like me to switch to the next slide um, don't switch to the next slide. Actually, if you can stay where you are, I don't know whether um, you can access this one or not, but it's from the spreadsheet because when uh, Sam and I were talking about just being able to vet through all of these, um, it's a difficult task. So I went through and I actually looked at 
the entire list and I saw some of my faves, Epic being one, Storyline Online was there, Scholastic's got some great things out with their online magazines, but I found some that were different that I was very interested in. So I'm a music person. And so the Rock Hall of Fame, no kidding, has a website that is listed in there. It's under, I think, so it's all alphabetical, I believe. And so Rock Hall was at the bottom. Uh, yeah, and, I'll start to scroll. I don't want to overwhelm people as I scroll. <laughs> right. So when you go to it, it, you could type in grade level. You could type in your subject. So I typed in um, literacy, of course, but they had choices for math and for social studies. And when you would click on it, it could take you to an, a lesson plan. It could take you to an artifact. Like you had a diff, like a whole litany of things that you could choose to sort of get down to exactly what you wanted for the nugget of information. But I was amazed and thought, this is a great time for us to explore all of these other resources that you just don't have time in your day to take care of. So while all our faves are on there, I would suggest looking for one that's just outside of the norm. And for me, this rock hall <laughs> was really great. Um, something else that I thought was cool, like Jarrett Lerner, we're gonna look at his um, website here in a second, but they have this thing called Storyboard and it's exactly like that. It's like making a graphic novel or a comic strip. And uh, Jarrett's doing that very same thing, putting them out for free for kids. And then he's posting what kids are making. So I think my advice, and I think Sam's advice for this list, it's a monster, it's amazing but it also can be overwhelming. And it makes me think of um, Bob Prost. I list Bob, Bob Prost. Gosh, I'm struggling today. I promise. But anyway, um, he said something in one of his books with Kylie Mears where he likens um, going into like Best Buy and there are all of these TVs on the wall. And he said, you know, I just, I just want a TV. I just want something that's gonna have, you know, clarity. I need to be able to hear it. It should be something that I'm comfortable with. And he said, I am overwhelmed when I see all of the different choices online or on the wall. And so I'm thinking this very same situation, there are so many things put out on Twitter and on Facebook that sometimes it just is too much. And I think, Sam, you and I have talked about this before, too, with the amount of tech things that come out on the daily, that don't be sucked in with maybe something that is mm. difficult or challenging. Like, you could lose a lot of hours, like, trying to figure something out. But if it's a clean entry and it has things like I'm seeing with this rock hall, it had all of the little buttons that I could click to get it right to my grade level, to specifically what I wanted to do. When it has that type of tool embedded in it, I think that is something that saves me time as a teacher when I'm looking for something. So be mindful as you're going through all of these because you could lose hours <laughs> down the bunny hole of looking at all the different things. <laughs> exactly. Yes, I. It, this is a fantastic resource and you guys can click on it and, and scroll through there and find more and more and more and just keep going down. But I would, I would, I challenge you to find one thing that you know about and create something with it, one thing that's new to you and try it out. Yeah. But don't spend too much time because it can get overwhelming. There's tons of resources on there and there's more that we're gonna talk about today. So I know one here uh, with Pernell Rip, um, Chris, oh, you're gonna yeah. share a little bit about this one, about picture books and authors because that's a big copyright thing that we're trying to yes. uh, navigate. So I don't know if you can click on that or not, Sam, to bring it up because she yes, embedded absolutely. Um, a lot of links. And what has been amazing is that the authors have been reaching out to their publishers and asking permission. And so people like Jason Reynolds and um, Josh Funk, just a, a lot of different folks that I know are popular with children have gotten permission and their edict has been that, you know, you can read it, you can read it in its entirety. They're just asking you to do two things. One, if you could put it on, going back to our LMS, if you could put it on a private site that is just for your students instead of like streaming it out live for the whole world, now that's one thing for the authors to do that, but they're asking you to just give it um, to your class. So if you have um, something like Google Classroom or like you said, Seesaw or anything, any platform that you're using, if you can just keep it on your own site, but then the other piece that they were asking is, once this is over, that you would actually delete that and remove it. So once we are sort of back to business as usual and 
being able to access books, um, then they're asking that you don't continue to use that as a tool to um, read to your students. So I, I think we need to be really mindful and appreciative of that, that we're given this opportunity to read aloud to our students and then don't don't take advantage of it. You know, don't put it out there. Don't put it out for profit, for heaven's sakes. You're, you know, but just, I mean, all those things we want to make sure we say. These authors are so kind, and many of them are actually doing readings themselves, which is really great. Like right now, we're up against Mo Willems. He's um, doodling with lunch. So every day yes. you can go on, I think, at, I think he's either at 11 or at 1. Um, I don't know. We have the resources, but it's just, it's great what the um, authors and illustrators are doing because it goes the same for illustrators. It's not just authors for copyright. It's also, if you're showing the pictures, same, same line of, of um, requests. So yeah, so this whole page that you, you've pulled up, thanks Sam, um, yeah. is just an example of Corneal just putting together different uh, literacy based because of course that's her her forte and her jam. Um, Kate Messner, she has a whole collection that you can see right there with um, videos that authors are doing and illustrators are doing. And the great thing about that is they're not just reading their work, they're telling you like why they became an author or why they became an illustrator. They're sharing some of their original drafts. They're sharing, you know, um, successes and failures. So it's like having an author visit and not having to pay for it, which can be quite expensive. So this is just a great collection and really it all is honing in on literacy um, as we know Perneal is phenomenal. <laughs> so we yes, can go to the next amazing. one then. She's amazing. Yes. Um, now, Chris, before I go to this next slide, I know you were talking mm -hmm. with your bestie. You go in and you read to children. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Can you share your plan with your bestie of how you guys are going to do some read alouds with your students? Oh my gosh, we're excited. Now she uses um, Dojo. So we're gonna actually be recording uh, the reading. We're doing Josh Monk's books because we're just getting ready to launch all of his with her kinders. And um, so we're gonna do that first. I had planned a um, an author visit at the end of May with uh, Greg Pizzoli, which is the kindergartners that I work with in my besties classroom. That's their all time favorite author illustrator because they are all about when the jacket reveal happens they like it when the book jacket is different from the cover and he is notorious for having amazing book jackets that are different from book covers so um right now i'm in conversations with him like how are we going to continue to have our author visit and i'm sure it's going to go virtual but I mean, it's the next best thing, right? It's what you have to do. So we're going to put those out. And and one thing that Terry and I talked about was um, our families are overwhelmed with this. Mm -hmm. And also they are working. And it's, yeah. you know, we're putting together ideas of schedules and things like that. But she she said something to me that resonated. Um, as you know, everything you ever learn, learn in kindergarten. So <laughs> she said that uh, she's just going to do it sort of like soft openings each day, just a little bit here and there, and not give them like a regimented schedule of things to do. Because parents are sometimes just not able to, it's too much for them, just mm -hmm. like it's too much for us, it's too much for them. So giving them almost like a little laundry list of things and having the kids play a role. I'm, I'm all about choice when it comes to a book. So I'm all about choice when it comes to like, what do you want to do today? Here, here are some things Mrs. Mulliken sent out. What do we want to do? And mm -hmm. hopefully they're going to choose, you know, to watch the video of the two of us reading, um, read aloud to the kids. Because we, not only do we do that, but we like to do the ones that are interactive where it's got one part and the other. So we, we get into it. We like it. <laughs> um, so I think, you know, keeping in mind that the kids are definitely going to need something to do, but we have to be mindful that we really can't control when it's going to happen. So I mm -hmm. think giving them more of a laundry list of things to do. And there are a couple slides later that we're going to look at to this sort of talk about that. So I just think it's providing them with choices, I think is really what we want to focus on instead of full on lessons. I agree. I love that. And your 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 idea of having you and your bestie work through a book together and each read different parts. I think that's something very simple that our student teachers can do as well. Oh, they can yeah. each, uh, read parts of a book. They can have, hey, we have a guest student teacher in our class today. Come <laughs> on in, Miss Smith. And then Miss Smith can come on via Google Hangouts and they can read the book together or read it back and forth. Love it. 
I think that's a great way to promote that promote that community. And maybe you can even have um, Miss Smith is from such and such an elementary school, and she's going to share with us this her favorite St. Patrick's Day book or whatever it might be. And I love the list yeah. of here are some things we can work on today with our children. Not overwhelming, and maybe just do a little check. Uh, here we built, we built with blocks. We made a macaroni craft, or whatever it might be. You know, just some <laughs> little ideas. You know, yeah. to help structure that day a little bit instead of um just more all, all free play. Absolutely. Oh, so all here's right, so Jarrett's website. Yeah, so let me it. open up his site. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Sorry, no. I mean, it's self-explanatory. I mean, he is pumping these out every day. And the thing that I love about Jarrett, there are so many things that I love about him, but he is actually um, promoting when people are sending them what their children are doing or making, he's promoting it. So I just, he's not just like, here, do this and checking it out. He's like, here, do this and then share it with me. And we're going to, we're going to put it out for the world to see. So he's just, he's too, he's too amazing. I love him. That's awesome. And I see he has all yeah. kinds of activities here. And this is just mm -hmm. one of his that he he has a, so they create or finish the comic book and that's a lot of yeah. fun that's something all students can do and he does like um all right and we have choices. Choices. sorry <laughs> oh nice oh and this is a guy who does a uh, pigeon pigeon uh pigeon yep, drives a bus know, pigeon yeah. wants a hot dog um, yeah <laughs> yeah yesterday they drew pigeon they they that's what they did for their first session yesterday at lunch oh, they, everybody doodled pigeon <laughs> So That's and he's fun. got piggy and elephant and uh, nuffle bunny. So just I can't imagine like every day there'll be something, but just watching him is mesmerizing. It's it's just a great opportunity for us to get a moment to steal a little you know peek into their world, into their brain, and how it works. It's just that in and of itself is a huge huge learning opportunity. Mhm. Mm and I like how today we're demoing some ways that people can interact with their students using Nearpod, using a webinar type type atmosphere. And we're going to get to some of these interactive pieces in a couple of slides here for you guys to interact with us in just a few moments. So we Yay. have another resource here. Go ahead, Chris. Oh my oh. gosh, this is great. So um, this is actually going to be, I think, a Facebook Live, and it's coming up on Friday. And so I know that... Um, our kinders absolutely love this author and all of his books, Jelly, Jelly, um, Peanut Butter and Jelly. <laughs> so I think he's going to. Oh, Chris, you cut out there. Can you repeat that? Oops, I think we lost Chris. Maybe she'll come back. So I can talk a little bit about this. Uh, so be sure to you're looking out on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. Authors and illustrators are holding events live uh, for students to participate in. And what a great way to create that, that classroom culture. Maybe everyone in your class has a challenge to draw a pigeon eating your favorite food. And they can, um, you know, I'll draw it out and share a picture on Seesaw or Google Classroom. There are lots of professional development events happening as well all over the internet. So there's Facebook Lives. I know Teach Better team is doing a Facebook check-in um, every once in a while with their teachers. Some people are doing professional development uh, sessions like we're doing here uh, for practicing teachers. So get in there and try to and learn something new from these amazing speakers that are opening up their opening up um, opening up their world to you and showing you how to do a little something. So anytime you see anything professional development on whatever tool du jour, check it out and get um, get involved in that. This is a great opportunity to learn something new and to take a, take a risk, try something new um, that you may not have experienced before. So like we had talked about before, it's very important to communicate with your cooperating teacher, with your mentor, your supervisor, and your students. There's lots of ways that you can do that. We have a few um, a few here. There we go. Um, for example, create a daily schedule, um, maybe uh, for for you and for your students as well with your cooperating teacher alongside them. Here's a small um, example here from Dr. Jody Welsh where she shared her daily schedule. And depending on the age of your students, this might look a little bit different uh, for them. I love the idea of getting outside. Um, play is learning for, for our young learners. Um, 
take take some breaks uh, from screen time for yourself as a teacher because it can get overwhelming with the flood of information that we're getting. So it's really important to to um, take care of yourself and take breaks. Whether you're a college student still participating in college courses, I know my college courses start up next week, um, please be mindful of taking time for yourself and reinvest in yourself too. And I love this idea of uh, rewards in each day. I know that I have um, a little stash of Cadbury eggs up above on my cupboard and I'm like, okay, it's eight o'clock, Cadbury egg time, I did it. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of, you know, making sure that you're taking care of yourself, you're, you know, investing in yourself, whether that be taking time to go for a walk, exercising, um, don't go to a gym. I know they just closed those down in Pennsylvania, but um, please try to take care of yourself and spend time with family and friends, use family that are in the house with you. Um, so make sure you can, you reach out to friends and family via Google Hangouts, um, calling on the phone. So don't, don't isolate yourself, reach out to others um, in, in lots of digital ways here. And let's see if we have Chris back. Chris, are you back? Working on it, or hopefully we're working on it there. <laughs> All right, so here's a little um, daily schedule from from Benny, who's a second grader. Here's his schedule, eight o'clock breakfast, uh, cartoons in the morning. Then he has gym and math and art and lunch and reading and recess. I love how he schedules then lots of uh, gym and recess. I think that's so fun. Then he has some free time and look, he's helping his mom out with dinner. Isn't that sweet? So I have student voice in that schedule as well. I love how Chris shared about the importance of um, allowing students voice and choice in that classroom. So I think that's so much in their, in their home classroom. I think that allows with the families have some flexibility for the students to really invest in their learning. I was listening to NPR this morning and there was a little girl that they interviewed and she said, today I did math with my dad, I did a craft project with my mom, and then we're gonna go make something. And I think that's a great way to spend time with, uh, if you have little ones at home or if uh, you and your co-op are working on a schedule, invite the students in on that conversation. And just, I love having a soft schedule. So you don't know when your student's gonna be able to, to work on content or work on content at all. So make sure that you're having a soft schedule for them. It's so important to maintain those relationships with your students and with your cooperating teacher using that online space. Like we had talked about before, there's lots of learning management systems out there. Uh, for example, at my school, we use Microsoft Teams and I direct message each of my students. I also, hi Chris, I think I can hear you clicking around there. Um, so I don't we know can go happened. in and, I don't know either, I'm glad you're back. Um, so we could go in and we can have those uh, individual conversations with each of our students. We can also have a big class announcement where students respond. Um, I, I, I'm thinking about doing one this week since we're off for the rest of the week with uh, send your favorite um, GIF or GIF, however you want to say it, um, about how you're feeling about classes starting and then having them um, respond to that with a little GIF or a GIF or maybe a little video or a picture and how they're feeling. And then that can help me gauge to see how we're doing. If we're going to introduce new content on Monday, if we're just going to get used to that online system. So try to see how your students are feeling during this time. It's a very uncertain time, but also uh, we want to model a positive um, a positive outlook. I know with our department, we're sending out positive notes. I plan to write uh, postcards to my to my college students and my pre-service teachers. And here, there's just a couple of little examples here. So there's tools out there that you can communicate with your students, free ones like Blooms, and does does not have anything to do with the Blooms taxonomy, teacher friends, but it's out there. It's Blooms with a Z. Remind is a really popular one, and some of these Tools also have translation available to um, to parents if they need that option as well. So that's really cool. Um, I also and make sure just like with everything else we talked about today, get your co-op or your mentor's teacher permission first before before you start using some of these tools and reaching out to your students. I like to have, I'm gonna write out little postcards to all my future teachers that are in my class. Um, and send them, send it to them. Um, maybe um, if I can find some hand, hand sanitizer on Amazon, send that out to them as well. I don't know, hopefully there's no price gouging on that. Um, and if you can try to set up a way to communicate with your students, whether that be on a weekly basis or something like that, we have just a little, 
some small examples if you're using something like Remind, um, have students do a photo challenge. For example, a picture of you and your uh, and your pet, and have them write a little a little prompt about that. Um, what is um, Cooper, my dog, thinking about right now? And as and maybe they can draw a little thought bubble and have them do a little write out there. Um, share what books you're reading. What books are in your teacher library? And maybe uh, with the author's permission, you can read a little excerpt of that. And remember Chris's rules for that. We can go back to that site from. Uh, from Pernell Rip and she can and she shared about making sure it's on a closed site for and also whenever this is over that you take it down. Um, share your favorite song or why. I had a student teacher who learned how to play the ukulele over the summer and so she played it for her students. If you play an instrument, play a little ditty for them or play their favorite song um, or one of their favorite songs or say, hey, I'm taking requests today. What are some of your favorites? And you can play it for them. Um, I love this. Oh, go ahead. On that same point, when you're talking about music, um, we had this really fun activity that we had done with choosing a character and then creating like a playlist and you can do it on Spotify for free. So mm -hmm. just even exchanging with each other, like, oh, here's the playlist I would make for, you know, name a character from any book and then just kind of do that exchange with the kids just to see, I think that would be kind of fun, but incorporate, you know, to incorporate music too. I love that. I love that. And, and music really can connect us. And I think it's fun right. on Spotify and um, other tools like that. You can see who's listening to what song. And I think that's a lot of fun. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I love the idea of a throwback picture of you and your students. Hey, remember that time we all dressed up as our favorite book characters or whatever it might be. And you can have uh, send out that picture. Um, picture of, of, of you. Um, modeling something or doing uh, something to promote a, a healthy lifestyle dur during this time. Maybe you're out taking a hike or doing yoga or something like that. It also shows you as a person and as a teacher, as a professional, um, as a professional, I'm gonna add a little activity here. And you guys should see it on your screen coming up here. So I'm gonna put in here, what are some of your ideas to connect with students? And you guys should see it on your screen coming up. And I'm going to hide my screen. There we go, or hide the names. So if you guys can put in your answers there, what are some uh, some ways that you can do to connect with students during this time? Oh, I love Loom. That's a great idea. Um, I think Loom is a free tool. There's also another one called Bomb Bomb or something like that. It's kind of like a video that you can send out to your students. I love with um, some motivation. YouTube Live, perfect. YouTube Live and Flipgrid. Oh, Flipgrid and YouTube Live. That's a great combo. I love that idea. So for some of our friends who are like, what's Flipgrid? I'll tell you. Um, Flipgrid is a fantastic video tool that you can set up with prompts and students can respond to using video. They can also reply to each other's. And if you wanted to, there's a rubric option that you can have in there. Flipgrid, Flipgrid, love it. Oh, a list of your favorite books on their grade level. That's a fantastic idea. Yes, Google Form check-ins, perfect. Dojo is very popular. Idea. Yeah, class website. Flipgrid is very popular, Chris. Look at that. I do. I love this Flipgrid. <laughs> oh my gosh, me too. And I think they're even giving it free now, where you you know you can have the longer recording to five minutes. I think is the most when I had the paid. Oh, I love that. That's I know a lot of companies like on that site that we shared earlier yeah. are doing a lot of freebies um, during this time. Oh, it's setting a pro poster. version. Yeah, the pro mm -hmm. versions are given away free with all the bells and whistles. That's really sweet. Oh, no video. Yeah. Yes, that's perfect. Excellent. Weekly newsletter. Yes. Oh, <laughs> Padlet. Yes. I love Padlet. These are fantastic. And you can even do something like we're doing now where we're connecting through GoToWebinar. You can do this through Zoom. I know Zoom just opened up their um, their platform. Pro you version. can have more yeah. than, yeah, the pro version as well. And you can connect with students just like this where they can still be participating in the talk through Nearpod and they can, you can, they can hear you as well through here. So I'm gonna close out this activity because I wanna be mindful of our time today. I'm gonna close that out and click yes. There we go.
So there's lots of different ways that we can connect with our students. So there we have a little, a little, um, a uh, multiple choice question here. And if you're looking on my screen, you can see the teacher view um, on your screen. You should have multiple choice options there. And this is just something else we wanted to demonstrate to you using Nearpod. You can have open mm -hmm. answer responses for students to, to give their feedback to. You can have multiple choice like this one here and you can see how students are doing on their answers. So if you're if you've already answered the re response, if you can look at the um, teacher screen, um, you might it, it might. Um, you'll be able to see how students are doing here. So we have lots of responses and we can see the percentage and um, we can go in if and I can see student names, but I'm hiding them here. So um, you have that option as a teacher to hide student names or to see them. And we have lots of different ones here. I love the recording a message, sending a postcard, scavenger hunt with Goose Chase. Chris, can you tell us a little bit about that? Because that sounds amazing. <laughs> So it's really kind of fun because you can do it on your phone and you can just go around. I can think when I first started using it, I used it for a scavenger hunt for kids to get familiar with uh, USMH. Our campus is the satellite campus for Frostburg. And so just going around and taking pictures of like our media center and where's the, um, the copier that the kids can do to print out using their print card and where can you actually find um, the resources that are available for them in the writing center and also we do have a computer lab but it's in the other building and so just taking pictures um, to get them used to that but in general I'm thinking it would be fun for the interns or teachers to do you know just to get them to be familiar with your own space right because you're at home be like oh so here's where I read this is my favorite place to read in my house you could take a picture of it um, or this is where I hang out, like my husband and I, even though it's freezing out five, we still go and sit down by the pool on my nanny swing, which I absolutely love. So <laughs> I would have that as a picture. So I'm just thinking, you know, it'd be kind of fun to let them a little more into your world and just do a little scavenger hunt around your house as to cool things or cool, cool places where you do things. Of course, in my kitchen, it would be a picture of my husband, Sheffy, cooking, not me. <laughs> but I don't know, I just think Goose Chase is fun, but you and I talked about this. They might open it up, but right now the free version, you can only have so many teams. Yeah, you can only have five teams. Yeah, yeah, that is a limitation there, but maybe they'll open it up. We'll see. So yeah, so there's lots of different ways you can interact with students using um using digital material, using postcards, mail, you know, sending that to them. But if you are going to send postcards or mail to students, um, I would recommend sending it to the school. Um, yeah. So we're going to talk about some ways yeah. that we can teach online because we d we don't know what our students have access to. Maybe you do know what your students have access to and they all have Chromebooks or they all have internet access. But we do have um, some students and I think this, this, um, this time, this time in our life right now, we're finding, you know, there's what access looks like can be different across the board. So maybe they have access to the technology, but they might not have access to Wi-Fi, or maybe they have access to both those things, but they don't know how to use it properly um, to, um, to learn and grow. Um, or maybe they don't have access to the device or the Wi-Fi. So we have lots of strategies that we're gonna share today. And this is where a lot of our resources came from. Oh, did that come back? Aww, nope, a frowny face. Oh, bummer. You know what oh, that, that is? That is uh, I checked that two or three times, and I don't know if it's just that, that it's been shared to me into my Google Drive, but it that is something that you and I will make available to the students because it is a professor put together a Google Drive, and she put all of these folders, and I actually got it off of, um, I think I followed her on Twitter, but inside she had specific to um, content grade levels, but then it might've been like compare and contrast third grade. And she had a full on folder of resources and lessons and ideas um, and materials that you could use. So I, it's kind of what you, Sam, have thought about um, our students doing, which is mm -hmm. coming in a little bit, but. Um, it has. Yeah, so I don't know, I thought I had a shareable link. So I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize that that's not working. That's all right. Well, we'll share, yeah, we'll share it. He's great. Yeah. <laughs> and I see we have something here: tools for online when um for online learning when the classroom closes. And we'll have this thing for a minute here. And this is through Canvas. And go ahead, Chris. I can't see it. I'm forgetting what it oh. is. 
<laughs> oh, sorry. It hasn't it's loaded thinking, yet. Thinking. It's from um, Instructure. Yeah, sorry. Oh, it's, all, yeah. it's all ready to go on my screen here. <laughs> so if you scroll, it is just the same thing. Um, I think for me, it's just, again, having some sort of resources where you can go and see what are people doing exactly, you know, what is it that we can can look to for examples of how I can still remain connected to my students. This might be designed a little more for um, our mentor teachers and for if there are any professors who have joined us for how they can remain in contact with their students, so adult learners. Um, but it's just an additional resource that I just wanted to pop in there for us to have. Perfect. And I see that there, whoops, sorry. I can see that there's lots of stuff that we can use for higher ed, K to 12, who are yeah. using Canvas to connect. And just remember, it's so important to keep that connection with our students, no matter what age they are. Having that mm -hmm. open connection. I told my students before we left classes, I said, whenever we do go online, I want I want you to be able to put your video on. So we still have that, that human connection. We may not be in right. the same space physically, but we can still see each other's beautiful faces. So I think Agreed. having that that is so so important um so what we were thinking about and i think this is a very important topic to discuss as we think about resources and using this time for student teachers to lead uh, future teachers to lead and student teachers to lead we really wanted to create something that we can share out with the teaching community there are lots of resources floating around out there and i think this is a great time for us to really lean into that so what i i imagine us doing as a collective group of 60 or 70 people all um, future educators and next generation of teachers is why don't we work to create something amazing for <laughs> for educators out there and so we, we had this idea of creating this um, shared folder and we can separate it however you would like by state or by subject area or by standards or whatever it might be and we can create content for teachers to use in their classroom saving them teacher time giving us practice to developing lessons developing engaging activities using educational technology some don't have to include educational technology but really thinking through how can we really take this time of need and really lead during this time time. And so we, we came up with this idea of developing this Google Drive folder that we can all drop resources in because truly, Chris, I know that I'm better together. Mm -hmm. We are all better together. Absolutely. And we can really grow as, as a community of future educators. So we want to open that up to you guys and we want to have, um, we want you guys to have access to it, to drop in your resources, your lessons that you're creating, and then share this out with the teacher community through Twitter, through Instagram, for them to go and to find resources that they can use in their classroom. Uh, but that gets me really excited in jazz because we just had um, a student teacher share out yesterday, name's Julia Pucci, and she shared out, okay, teachers and PA, I know this is, we have a 10 day break, and she put it in quotes, but, I want you to use this time to rest, but what can I do to help you? And I love Julia's enthusiasm to, to lead from day one. So let's do that. Let's match that. Let's lead from day one, friends, and let's create some content that our teachers can use. And it can be on your favorite content area. It can be something, you know, just to keep those teacher skills sharp. And I think this is a fantastic right. way for us to do that. And we would love to to work on work with you on that so we're all in this together we truly are better together we want to know what questions and concerns you have and i'm going to open this up to um before we do that i'm going to share this really quick uh, before we open up to questions think through some questions that you might have but there's ed tech companies we had talked about earlier um, a couple of ed tech companies like zoom giving pro versions for free there's someone created this beautiful wakelet and if you don't know what wakelet is it's kind of like um what's i think it was storify was um something that J jolie here created this beautiful wakelet but storify was something that you can pull in content web links video images text and headings and this is what um she created with ed tech companies who are giving um some of their stuff uh pro versions for a limited time for teachers and you can scroll through and you can see like peak pack here is giving away stuff there's tons of twitter chats you can participate in brain pop um, if your school has is close to COVID-19, apply for free access to Brain Pop, and they offer amazing resources for educators. Um, Deck Toys, Storyline Online, I know that's your jam, Chris. It was my oh, jam yeah. too. Love it. Uh, yeah, these have, um, as you can see, celebrities. We have um, <laughs> Anna, 
um, uh, or uh, I forget the actress's name, but she's reading on there. Um, we have resources for distance learning. And there are so many out there. Buncee, fantastic resource. And they combine wow. Teams, Immersive Reader, Google Classroom, Flipgrid, all sorts of res um, resources into one. Buncee has amazing stuff. There's also, I saw floating out there, um, museums that are doing virtual tours for free. Uh, yeah. Spelling City. So as you can see, there's a list, and I think it's set up above like 60 or 70 resources that are now going free for teachers. So scroll through this list, pick out two or three, maybe um today and then uh share them with your cooperating teacher then find a couple more the next day don't go through this list and be and like have to breathe through a paper bag just try finding a couple of things that are going to speak to you and i think there's so many things out there that can um that can really help us reach our students teach them some awesome content along the way k through 12 and so this is a fantastic resource for you guys and like i said we'll be giving this presentation to you guys in student mode after our presentation today so we yeah. i think i think on our next slide we have a little question here um would you like to approve student comments I'm going to say no. <laughs> uh, but, so I'd like to hear some of your <laughs> ideas of how you can creatively teach your students online. So let's think beyond the chalk and talk. Let's think beyond the lecture and quiz. But what are some really unique ways you can engage your students in an online learning space? And you can type in your response here and you'll see this post button go blue. And as people start sharing their responses, we'll see some little um, post-it notes come across our board here. And if you like something that somebody posts, click a little heart next to it. You'll see a little heart come up. <laughs> Cahoots. Oh, I'm so glad somebody mentioned Cahoots. There's tons of formative assessments. Oh, that one got liked a lot. Look at that. Um, um, cahoots and quizzes. Oh, <laughs> Minecraft challenge. That's mass shape of the day. Oh, that's fantastic. See, we are better together, friends. Look at all Absolutely. these ideas. Google expedition to virtual reality. Yes. Um, I know Nearpod offers virtual oh, field yeah. trips as well. So if you would like to check that out, um, Google lit trips, those are fun uh, for students. Uh, Google tour. Or Builder is also a fantastic resource. Ooh, Shapegrams. I don't know about you, Chris, but I'm going to check that one out. That's new to me. Newsbrain. Yeah. Uh, where did that one go? Okay. All right. Oh, cool. that's good. That's yeah. good. Splash Math. Or, yeah, Splash Math is fantastic. Virtual Tours Museums. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that, Chris. The Rube Goldberg Challenge. I oh, love it. I love a Rube Goldberg. Yes. Oh my gosh. That takes me back to my days of teaching fifth grade. <laughs> Web I used to make Google books. Oh, these are fantastic, friends. I love this. Yes, I love visiting a zoo via webcam on rainy days, and we can bring that into our students. Maybe we can even um, have our students read to a zoo animal for the day. Oh, I yes. love it. Prodigy, virtual Indeed. tours, national awesome. parks. Oh, extra math. I haven't used that in a long time, but that's a great one too. Mm -hmm. I know there were people asking like how they could keep their kids sharp on just, you know, basic number sense and things like that. It's a good one. Mm -hmm. Excellent. For our, some of our young learners out there, there's tools like um, Starfall, which is a great resource for, yeah. um, I think it's pre-K, it's young learners, like pre-K to three maybe or pre-K to five. Um, Starfall is yep. great. Yeah, um, I use that with my daughter. Oh, Maybe just... the gingerbread man. <laughs> Did they? Oh, that's great. Like, Did um, they open it up? They, I don't know if they opened up that, but Raz Kids was opened up, which is phenomenal from learning A to Z. And oh it's, yes, it's an amazing resource, and they opened that for free, which I was excited. That's amazing because that's a very expensive. Um, I've paid for it. It's very <laughs> expensive. <laughs> So that's a wonderful source. Oh, Khan Academy is always good. Absolutely. And I love Seesaw. <laughs> oh, yes. Absolutely. And Padlets are great. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And Chris, uh, for some of our friends who aren't familiar with Seesaw, can you share a little bit about what that is? <laughs> Seesaw. I was introduced to Seesaw by um, my good friend, Carly Shockey, who is an adjunct for us here at Frostburg. And she teaches um, currently second grade, but she was in first for a while. And we actually do, we put all of our candidates into Seesaw so that they can see. But basically it's a mashup of like Flipgrid meets Google Classroom meets Doodlecast Pro or EduCreation, whichever of those tools you like. So basically kids can, um, 
record a picture and like for mm -hmm. littles, especially when you've got them and they want to write a story and they'll write it and it's in their very um, basic letters all over the place kind of thing. When you have them read it to you, you can record their voice and then you can hear what the story is supposed to be, you know, in, in print. Um, but then they can also um, record a video of themselves. They can talk to each other. Parents can be added in and they can comment on their, their child's work so that they can see because everything doesn't always make it home. Um, but it's just a great tool that brings in audio, video, and uploading materials. And littles can upload a picture of anything that they're working on. So it's just a great way to keep, I guess, really to keep in contact and still be able to have that human piece, like you're saying, Sam, that you can see each other, but you can still, you can hear them and then you can see the work that they're doing and they can comment about it. So it's a safe place, it's closed, it is it is free, which is great too. I um, love it, I love it. I, I really wanna commend the ed tech companies out there that are opening up their, their resources for teachers around the world. This really is a great way to come together. I think. I think we're really changing the world here. Don't know what's going on with that. Uh, maybe, nope, okay, frowny face again. That makes me sad, but uh, that's all right. So we wanna end today with what What are some questions and comments that you have? Now, some of them related to certification, um, hours, we don't have those answers. I'm sorry, friends, we, we just don't have those at, the, at this time. But if there's something that you wanna talk about through online learning or interacting with students, how do I engage students? Um, in an online space. If you want to open that up uh, at this time, if you have any questions, uh, please drop them here. And we'll try our very best to answer it. Ooh, that's a good one. I think they, that's the elephant in the room. How can we ensure that students are actually doing these online assignments? And that's a great question. I have that same question about, um, my candidates that I work with up to the doc level. I mean, you, you, how do you know? Honestly, yeah. how do you know? It, it really is an honest question. And I don't know how to answer that. Um, I, I, I'm i gonna default on just trusting the students that they're doing their work, that they're interacting with the content that you're giving them. Um, try, think, think about different ways you can assess them besides just a multiple choice test or um, something like that, maybe allow them to show what they know in different ways so it gets their voice out there or um, yeah. have them share a flip grid, something like that. Yeah. So they, um, so or they you have can to explain it. Yeah, Thank you. I think Thank when you, you do Seesaw, it. yeah, when you have kids, just like I was saying with the littles, when they've written it, but you really can't read it, you know, they can tell you it's the same with adult learners, um, middle grade, wherever you are. I think it comes down to just really doing something more than submitting a multiple choice, like you said, Sam. I think it has to be more about them talking and recording their voice. It doesn't have to be video, it could just be audio. Sometimes my students post to our discussion board using audio, which is fine because it's them. And I think mm -hmm. this is an opportunity for us to really have conversations. And we know research shows that our best writers come from the best conversationalists. You've got to give kids time to talk. So I think this is a perfect opportunity to really grow their ability to communicate through just conversation. And mm -hmm. then, you know, once you've heard them record it, then you can say, okay, why don't you capture that in print and send that to me, right? So you do it verbally, um, audio, video first, and then have them do the, the print version. So just kind of flipping it. Yeah, I like that. As I as you were responding, I was reading through some of our questions. What if students don't have access to technology? And that's yeah. a great question. I know a lot of our districts are grappling with that right now. Some students have access to devices, laptops or phones. Some students have access to those, but they don't have Wi-Fi. Some right. students don't have, have access to anything. And that just is, there's no, um, silver bullet answer for this one. I think it's yeah. something that you need to work closely with your cooperating teacher on, uh, see what, what their plan is, what their district's plan is. If they're going to, I know some districts are saying, we're not doing anything for these next two weeks, go have fun with your families um, at home. Right. Some are moving to an online space, but really all depends. And I, I'm sorry, I don't have an answer. What if we? What happens if students don't have access to technology? I would say um, try some snail mail. Keep that communication going. If they're not doing, if they're not doing any remote learning, I would still try to keep that communication going with students. Um, maybe bring back that uh, flat Stanley type idea where we can, yeah. um, you know, uh, here's flat Stanley reading in um 
reading in our book nook at our house and here's Flat Stanley reading in our kitchen. I don't know, trying to do something that can still engage our students without that technology um, and bring, bring it back to students after you guys come back from classes. I don't know, what do you think, Chris? Hello. Well, I mean, it takes me back to when I used to send postcards to my students before the school year started. And um, the other hiccup that I would run into is, is sometimes, you know, my student would have moved by the time the postcard got there. So I would still try that route, um, getting your students, e or not email, but their home address, and maybe just sending out postcards to them. I think that's a, a great place to start. And I know, for example, the University Plaza where I work is an open air space. And so it's, a, it's like a little community park. And if people go there, they have access to the Wi-Fi. So not that we want to congregate in huge collective bunches, not saying that, but if a mom takes her child and they take their iPad and they go to you know, the University Plaza and they, there are benches and all kinds of things, they could sit there and they could have access to free Wi-Fi. That's one place that they could. But with restaurants closing, libraries closing, you know, those types of things are not going to be, that's places where my kids could have had access to Wi-Fi and now they're not going to have access to it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm wondering if we aren't going to see something in the next couple of, of weeks where maybe Wi-Fi will become uh, something that people can access for free in remote, mm -hmm. I mean, places that they could put it out where you wouldn't have to, again, you don't want to congregate because that's what we're trying to avoid, but I'm just wondering, I'm just wondering. And I know that the one of the, I don't want to say, but I know one of our partnering, um, uh, yeah, counties actually have little hot spots. I'm wondering if those couldn't be an option, you know, for people to be able to, to check out a hot spot and keep mm -hmm. it and use it for a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, these are all know. things that we're all them. working through. Yeah. So I think it I might just one, be down, down to that. There's one more question that I want to address here. What if my county is treating the first two weeks off of snow days? Do I send homework? I'd say absolutely not. Um, <laughs> if your cooperating teacher is, that's fine. I would honestly, um, if this is the student teacher that asked that question, I would try to start working through some content that you can do to support your, your cooperating teacher. Um, you know, whether that be some planning, maybe you create something digitally for students to do, um, something like that. But I wouldn't worry about sending homework right now. Uh, what do you think, Chris? If if the if the county is treating the first two weeks off as snow days, right? I would say, you know, my go-to homework for my kids, like the greater half of my career, was to read and just do something with numbers. And we gave them ideas of things to do with numbers. Some of my kids liked to do. Um, math facts practice. Some kids just liked counting things. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that you can do to grow number sense, but just in general reading, I think that's an always a good go-to for homework. <laughs> it's just giving them the opportunity to read. And I, I would encourage people to keep that in mind and just experiencing things. Thank goodness the weather in our area is being cooperative. Uh, there's a lot that can be, you know, experienced outside and just that space and like, you know look at worms in the mud <laughs> dig stuff up play get <laughs> dirty I, I mean i think yes I, and i also want to say something my bestie and i always talk about too is kids today are um they're not really good at being like not entertained like it's okay you don't have to entertain your kids 24 7 and they don't have to be entertained by something for 24 7. i think that it's okay for kids to actually get a little bored mm -hmm. and that way they're more appreciative of things as opposed to just feel like it's always to you know give me give me give me and entertain me and make me happy um we have to kind of look into your own like in inner self and ways that you can just kind of sit in silence we're always talking about practicing mindfulness and trying to just get the calm back and i think maybe this is a opportunity for us to practice that just to sit in silence for a little bit and listen to the birds yay the birds are chirping so i know right? <laughs> why not just sit there and listen to them and just the different sounds of an outside i was as my husband and i were sitting down by the um by the pool on my nanny swing last night i said to him oh my gosh we're beside a, a road that's not super busy but it's you know there's some good there's a lot of noise that's usually happening and i said to him do you hear that and he's like what and i'm like actually do you not hear that 
I said, it has not been this quiet. I can't remember. I can't remember. And that's, a, I mean, I miss that. So I think it's time for us to just slow down. We're in such a busy, mm -hmm. fast paced world that maybe we just need to take advantage of this and slow down, be in the moment, be still, be present and not really have to be on our devices all the time. I think, I don't know, did you share right. the, the schedule, the little schedules? Cause I was, I, I, I did. I yes, out. I did. So I did you show Benny P's? I, I showed Pease. little Benny schedule, yes. Oh my God, right? That's my nephew. And uh, I just love that. And, and how you can create it. And Dr. Welsh, Jody, she created her little schedule. And I've seen people putting schedules for themselves. Like, I need to make sure that I don't just fall into a slump of doing nothing and being, you know, lazy. <laughs> but I think there is a little bit of um, good comes from slowing down and and just being present and being with your family and not feeling like you have to be doing something all the time. I think that's good. So right. maybe letting kids just play and get bored. I yes. hate to say it, but yes. as a parent, I think that's not a bad thing. My son, right. you know, could play by himself because I wasn't always able to entertain him, but just a thought. I love it. And you know what? We, uh, just yesterday, we went on a listening walk with my three-year-old, and we listened for things, and we checked stuff off our list, and um, it was just so much fun just to engage in different ways. Um, so Chris and I, or do, sorry, Dr. McGee, Chris, whatever. I'm going to go with Chris. We're on a first name basis. Uh, we are thinking about maybe doing the, doing something like this. Uh, we're not sure the schedule yet, um, but we would love to sit down and work through some, some of our favorite tools, maybe like one. Um, maybe one or two a session like i know i want to work through bunsy with you guys and i'm going to show you nearpod um and i'm sure chris has lots of resources too so we're thinking about continuing these short little um the the other ones would be shorter they wouldn't be this long um little um we want to call them tech bites or something like that maybe 10 to 15 minutes here's a quick tool you can use with your students here's a quick demo of it here's how you sign up and here are some ways you can use it with your students and we definitely want to start with like nearpod and some buncy working through twitter things like that to help you stay connected as well so if you're interested hit us up over on twitter here's our um our usernames at SFESIC and at Dr. K. McGee. We also have a hashtag here. Uh, we would love to bring this community together um, and really lead. We will put a link to the Google Drive folder here that Chris mentioned um, that the professor created. And then we also want to start creating our own resources too to share out with that teaching community. And we'll start using the hashtag future teachers lead. I think that's a great way for us to really step into this role as the next generation of teachers and really use this time to lead and share and show what we know and bring in resources sources to help teachers from around the country and around the world. So friends, we want to thank you so much for your time today. I'm sorry. Um, I mean, we want to thank you so much for your time today. I know we went a little long, but we, we just thank you so much. And we, we hope to continue these talks with you. If you're interested, like I said, hit us up over on Twitter and in, um, Instagram um, and use the hashtag future teachers lead more information will be coming once we figure out <laughs> why do we want to do this again I know it'll probably be um, in the evening for me I have a I have a three-year-old out there banging down the door so uh, we want to we want to know what are some ways that we can help you um, lead during this time so if you'd be interested in any of these areas that we talked about maybe it's a tech tool maybe it's a quick literacy tip or if um, a pedagogy that can use that you can use in the online space, whatever you need, however we can support you, please drop it here in the um, in the short answer response that we have for you guys. We truly believe that we are stronger together. We are better together. We can grow and lead from this group. And if you want to share anything that you what you're doing in your online space, please, please, please reach out to us. We want to highlight and showcase you and the amazing things that you're doing during this time of need. So friends, let's take this time of need let's lead as future educators and let's rock this together we are better together we are stronger together thank you for your time pop your answers in and we'll be in touch um, through email if you would like more information we're happy to share that out as well and um, yeah we'll be in touch with more sessions and yeah we're really excited for this opportunity to lead and grow together
I agree. I think going over some different tools would be really helpful. We will share all the resources and we'll share all the things that we can come up with, but we'll try to make it um, not overwhelming. So I know that spreadsheet was, um, I know it gave me a, a little bit of some sweats, but I, I would love to go in and be like, okay, here's a spreadsheet. Here are three tools that we can use for literacy. Or so like really break it down a little bit there to help us consume that material. Awesome. I'm glad we're going to stay connected. I saw that the infamous Amanda Jean was somewhere on this session. I hope she shares what she's doing with her amazing students in an online space. Yes, yeah, so I see a lot of going over some tech tools would be helpful. Staying connected would be super great. Awesome. Oh, Pear Deck. Yes. Yay. All right. Um, I don't know if that's Lisa Durf signing up to say that she'll present that. Maybe it is. I'm hoping so. Lisa, if you're signing up for that, we will we will be happy to host you during that time. I think it'd be so much fun. Yes, let's keep this going. Fantastic. We're so glad you guys enjoyed this. And we are so happy to keep this going. Um, yeah, th this is fantastic. Thank you so much. Yes, and I'm sorry about the technology and just me in general. This was, I have to say, overwhelming to me. This is the first time I've ever hosted a webinar. Um, I am not tech savvy, so if nothing else, I should give people hope that um, you can do it. Uh, I couldn't even remember what holiday it was at the beginning of this event. So at least I do know it's St. Patrick's Day. My name is Dr. McGee, for heaven's sakes. You would think I would know that today was St. Patrick's Day, but no. Um, I guess in general, I'm going to see what recorded because my internet lost power. I lost power. I was kicked off once. I was kicked off the second time. So I'm hopeful that this is recorded. We will put this out. We have a sandwich to share with the folks who signed up. And then and you share our hashtag because I was, I was off. <laughs> so, did you share our hashtag with them? So, Chris, you're cutting out pretty bad there. I heard was something like your internet weird <laughs> or it's down or something like that or it's a little wonky today. We will share this out in student pace mode. So if you sign up on the Google form, I have access to that. And then we also have access to the Go webinar uh, for that as well. So we'll be sending out information. We'll send this presentation out specifically in student pace form. Um, give me until like this evening to do so. I kind of, I'm on toddler duty for a while, <laughs> uh, which I'm really excited about spending some time with my daughter. And um, so give me some time to work through that. We'll also work through a little schedule. Maybe we can bring in some guest speakers. I think it'd be so much fun to keep this community going and share, please share all the things that you're learning about. We are truly better together. All right, friends, I think we're signing off. Sound good? Sounds good. All Thanks, right, thank guys. you, Chris, for hosting this. We will oh be in touch. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody. All right, so I just have to figure out how to end it. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> and the thing is, I'm afraid that when my internet, we lost power. I don't know if you heard me say that, but I lost power which is one of the reasons why I was kicked off. Now, the second reason, I have no idea um, why I was kicked off, but I am just looking now to see where I'm gonna be able to keep this. Um, Cause it doesn't, it's not giving me the option to like end meeting. It seems like I should have that, right? Should. Right? This session is being recorded. That sounds so. So what? What did the? What did the folks say? Oh wait, wait, wait. I think I think if you click on the I think if you click on the X. Um, here I can share my screen real quick. So if you click on this X. Whatever I clicked, it said, "Do you want to end the webinar, or do you want to leave the webinar?" And I'm going to click yes. So I'm going to try that. <laughs>